Hello everyone, recently I did a sermon on Lot and the Three Angels' Messages uh, as found in Revelation 14 and Genesis, of course. And part of that message was on husbands and fathers leading their families. Anyway, here's a short excerpt from that sermon. I hope you enjoy it and please let me know what you think in the comments. We notice that the angels gave the directions to Lot. See, it was Lot's responsibility to lead his family. The mothers have a heavier responsibility of character building for their children, yes. But it was Lot's job to tell his family, let's get out of here. An interesting note is that the words for arise and take are both imperatives or commands. Literally, it means to carry away or carry along. So I have to ask you, my fellow men, are you carrying your family to the throne of grace every day? And, and single mothers, let's not leave them out. See, it doesn't have to be three-hour prayers, three-hour family worships every morning, but you do need to be having those family worships every day. Never neglect that. The moment you start neglecting family worship is the moment your family starts to spiritually decline. See, a lot of us make excuses for sin. We make excuses as to why we can't do family worship. I just don't have the time. Hogwash. Make the time. And God tells Lot, get out of the city. And what does he do? Lord, can I just go to this city? God says, go to the mountains. Lot says, can I just go to this, this small one? Can I, can I just go to Longview instead of Jefferson? <laughs> so we're spiritually ADD by nature. You know, if you've, you've probably experienced it. I know I certainly have. See, Lot's faith, as we had already said, had grown weak and dim. And because of his delay, his wife lost not only her temporary life, but her eternal life because of Lot's delay. Now, understand, she will have her own accountability and her own judgment to meet. But we are specifically told, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 161, that if Lot himself had manifested no hesitancy to obey the angel's warning, but had earnestly fled toward the mountain without one word of pleading or remonstrance, his wife also would have made her escape. The influence of his example would have saved her from the sin that sealed her doom. But his hesitancy and delay caused her to lightly regard the divine warning. While her body was on the plain, her heart clung to Sodom, and she perished with it. How sobering is that? And, and as a husband and a father, I have to stop and do a little bit of introspection. Am I leading my family to God every day? Morning and evening. Volume 4 of the Testimonies, page 111, paragraph 3. This is a bit of a longer quote, but it, it, it's very, very good. How reluctant was Lot to obey the angel and go as far as possible from corrupt Sodom, appointed to utter destruction. He distrusted God and pleaded to remain. Living in the wicked city had weakened his faith and confidence in the justice of the Lord. He pleaded that he could not do as he was required, lest some evil should overtake him and he should die. Angels were sent on special mission, on a special mission to save the lives of Lot and his family. But Lot had been so long surrounded by the corrupting influences that his sensibilities were blunted, and he could not discern the works of God and his purposes. He could not trust himself in God's hands, to do his bidding. How sobering is that? It continues. He was continually pleading for himself, and this unbelief cost him the life of his wife. Think about that one. 
unbelief cost the salvation of somebody. In this case, it cost him the life of his wife. One more from Patriarchs and Prophets. It says, The sinful conduct of Lot's daughters was the result of the evil associations of that vile place. Its moral corruption had become so interwoven with their character that they could not distinguish between good and evil. On page 169 of that same book, it says, Like Lot, many see their children and barely save their own souls. See, Lot had made so many mistakes that he's the only one from his family that seems to be saved. She specifically says here, barely saved their own souls. So I think Lot finally made the right decision, and he saved. But notice that it says his daughters could not discern between right and wrong. So how do we prevent this, this weak faith? Well, at the end of the third angel's message, there is a contrast. You know, it says, here are those who accept the mark of the beast. Here's why they did it. Here's how they did it. Here are those who keep the commandments of God. They have the faith of Jesus. Here's how they did it. Here's why they did it. God never gives us these warnings without giving us a way out. See, and it's, it's, Lot had this choice to make. Am I going to perish in the destruction of the city, or am I going to accept God's seal and his salvation? There's a message I encourage you to look up on YouTube by Chris Hudson. If you go to his YouTube channel, Forerunner777, it's called Only Two Will Be Saved. And it compares and contrasts Noah and Lot. See, Noah's whole family was saved. All eight of them made it on the ark. And out of Lot's family, who had, what, at least six Uh, at least eight, actually, if you count his sons-in-law, one, one will be saved. Um, See, if we we don't have this faith talked about in Revelation 14, 12, we're we're not going to make it through the time of trouble. But God doesn't force the will. Understand that. God is not going to hold you at gunpoint. He's not going to show up to your bedroom door and say, accept me or else. Now, he does say in the Bible that if we don't accept him, we are going to perish. But it's not so much, it's not because he wants to. It's not because he wants to punish us. It's because we leave him no other choice. See, we need to accept the truth of righteousness by faith. In fact, that's one of the reasons Jesus has not returned yet. Because over 100 years ago, God tried to revive this church with a message of righteousness by faith, and we rejected it. That's why we're still here. If we would have accepted it, we'd be in heaven right now. Well, they would be. I'm not sure if we would have been created yet. But um, what constitutes the faith of Jesus then? It's the faith in his ability to save you fully to completely keep you from falling. What sin is it that you struggle with? Put God to the test. Ask him, prove your power to me, and please help me conquer this sin, whatever it is. Now, we do have cooperation to do. If you struggle with things like pornography, well, don't, don't be found alone with the Internet. Put filters on your phones. Faith is something that you have to exercise every day. 